Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to Canterbury Cottage. It's the first week of October and it is finally starting to feel like fall here in the Midwest. So you know what that means. It's time to start our Christmas crafts. <laughs> That's right, the Christmas supplies are out at Hobby Lobby and Dollar Tree. And we better get what we need now because we all know the good stuff will be gone before you know it. Today, I'm going to show you how to make Christmas houses using the $1 bird houses you can purchase at Dollar Tree, Walmart, or Michaels. This is a really fun and budget-friendly project. And these houses end up looking so adorable. I can't wait to show you how they turned out. So let's get started. When selecting birdhouses for your Christmas village, avoid those pentagon shaped ones that will always remind us of a birdhouse. I wish I had seen the Michaels birdhouses before I bought several at Dollar Tree and Walmart. Before painting your houses, remove any stickers and the little bird perch. I also recommend removing the base. With the base removed, it will look more like a miniature house and less like a birdhouse. I cut one of the houses in half on my miter saw to glue to another house to create the appearance of an attached shed. I attached it to the side with the hole, but it didn't completely hide the hole, so I used some wood fill to fill in the rest. I chose the traditional Christmas colors of red, green, and white and painted my houses with chalk paint that I had on hand in those colors. I painted the roofs in various shades of brown chalk paint. I used more rustic colors on the two houses I had glued together because I wanted them to look like a farmhouse. To create pedestals for my houses, I cut pieces off of an old fence post, and then I dry brushed each piece with some white chalk paint to give it a slightly snowy appearance. To dry brush, you want to dab your paintbrush on a paper towel and remove most of the paint. I used this technique on the roofs of the houses too. To create a background for my farmhouse, I drew some simple mountain shapes on a scrap piece of wood and then cut these out with my jigsaw. I attached the mountains to a scrap piece of 2x6 using super glue. When the glue was dry, I drilled holes and permanently attached the two pieces with wood screws. I painted the entire thing with some beigey gray chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I drew some peaks of snow on the top of each mountain and then painted it in with white chalk paint. And I dry brushed the two by six. When the white paint was dry, I applied some Mod Podge over the snow peaks and then sprinkled on some fake snow. With the houses and the bases painted, I was ready to start adding doors and windows and other architectural features to each little house. I drew straight, evenly spaced lines on the roof of one of the houses and then filled it in with a scallop design using my hot glue gun. When the hot glue was cooled, I went over the roof again with another coat of white chalk paint. With the holes of the birdhouse on the back side, I used a ruler to draw out the placement of the doors and windows on what would become the front of the house. To create the windows, I went over the pencil lines with a white paint pen and then filled in each little square with a black paint pen. I had to go over the white lines a couple times to get good coverage, but the black pen worked perfectly in just one coat. I used my miter shears to cut up little pieces of popsicle sticks to create window shutters and doors, which I attached to the house using Starbond super glue. On some of the houses, I left the shutters and doors in their natural wood, 
and on some of them I painted them in coordinating colors. I also used this as an opportunity to go over the white window panes yet again. I wanted to add additional architectural features to make each house unique. To create cupolas, I cut the corners off of a small square of plywood and then super glued these to the roof. I also cut two small squares from a popsicle stick to glue on as a roof for each cupola. Then I painted each piece of popsicle stick in the same color as the rest of the roof and the cupola in the same white paint as the rest of the house. To create a portico, I cut two small strips of the popsicle stick about the same size as the shutters and then arranged them in a triangular shape above the door and attached them using the Starbond super glue. I painted the portico in the same color of chalk paint as the door and the shutters. On a different house, I used the rounded end of the popsicle stick to create an awning to match the scalloped roof. I attached it with super glue and some hot glue and then painted it white to match the roof. I wanted to create a porch for the farmhouse and so I cut a rectangle from a large popsicle stick and hot glued it above the door. And then I cut two very thin strips of popsicle stick, which I super glued to the roof to create little posts. The accelerator spray, which causes the super glue to dry instantly, was crucial in creating these little porch posts. I painted the roof of the porch to match the roof of the house. I cut a stick up into small pieces and hot glued them to the shed to look like a pile of logs. I cut out tiny triangles from colored paper and hot glued them to a piece of thread. I attached the thread to the porch with hot glue and hung it like a little banner. To create a wreath, I gave a haircut to one of those pine stems and formed a circle with a small piece of it, which I then hot glued to the house. To embellish the wreaths, I either added a bow made from baker's twine or I glued on some of those small glittery foam balls from Dollar Tree. The roof on this house looked very cottagey to me, and so I made a trellis using small pieces of popsicle stick, which I super glued directly to the house. And then I attached a stem from a fake plant to create a vine for the trellis. To create a window box, I used another little strip of wood and super glued it below the window. Then I cut off tiny bits of greenery and hot glued it to the top of the little strip of wood. Because of the cupolas, the hole in this house was on the side rather than in the back, and so I cut a small strip of wood to cover it up. I printed out an image of tiny bricks, which I cut out and attached to the piece of wood using Mod Podge. I cut off the excess paper with scissors and a utility knife. Then I wrapped another small piece of wood in the brick paper and hot glued it on to the side of the house to imitate the look of a chimney. Finally, I glued on a little pillow stuffing for smoke. For the other houses, I just drilled a hole in the roof and attached a black wood screw to serve as the chimney. Because I want my little houses to light up, I drilled small holes in each pane of the windows. You can make the holes larger if you want more light to shine through. After drilling the holes, I touched up the paint of the window panes using my black paint pen. I was now ready to attach the houses to the bases that I had painted earlier. I applied super glue to the base of the house and sprayed the wood base with accelerator and then attached the two. 
Then I went around the entire base of the house with hot glue and sprinkled fake snow on the glue while it was still hot. I did the same thing where the house met the roof to fill in the small opening there. I applied spray adhesive to the roof of each house and then sprinkled fake snow on the roof before the adhesive dried. I brushed on a little Mod Podge to other areas where I wanted to apply a little snow. The next step was to add trees and other outdoor features to my wood bases. To create a tree from a stick, I drilled a hole in my wood base and then I put the stick in the hole with a little hot glue. I also applied hot glue to the branches so fake snow would stick to it. Later I added a tire swing made from a metal washer painted black. I used the same process to attach bristle brush trees. I removed the small wood round from the bottom and then insert the tree into the drilled hole with a little hot glue. To create a ladder, I cut up a couple very small round craft sticks, but toothpicks would work too. I attached the rungs with super glue, but if you don't have accelerator, I would recommend using hot glue instead. To create a rustic fence, I cut a stick into several half inch long pieces. Then I drilled holes in my base where I wanted the sticks to go. Then I inserted one stick in each hole using a little hot glue. I took a long strand of florist wire and ran it between and around each of the sticks. When I got to the last stick, I repeated the process and came back until I reached the first stick. I applied a little spray adhesive and then sprinkled on some fake snow. I also glued on a tiny bird and a tiny deer. You can find these with the miniature Christmas ornaments or with dollhouse and fairy garden supplies. I don't like to go overboard with the fake snow because it can get quite messy. Instead, I prefer to glue on a few miniature snowballs in random spots. To add a little variety to this house, I decided to add a bush made from a small scrap of greenery. I also decided to make a picket fence from pieces of a popsicle stick to add to another house. I thought the wood bases for the houses looked a bit plain, and so I printed out the lyrics to a few Christmas songs. Remember the wood bases that I popped off the bottom of the birdhouses? Well, they were the perfect size to attach to the front of each pedestal, and so I used Mod Podge to decoupage the Christmas lyrics to that piece of wood. Then I hot glued it to the front center of the fence post pedestal. When the Mod Podge was fully dry, I sanded the edges to remove any extra bits of paper. I attached nails in the corners of the plaque just for looks, and then I applied a protective top coat of Mod Podge. To light up the houses, I purchased the yellow battery-operated fairy lights from Dollar Tree. Using the bird hole in the back of the house, I inserted all of the fairy lights into the house, and then I hot glued the battery box to the back of the fence post pedestal. If you don't want to attach your houses to a base, the battery pack will fit inside the larger Walmart houses. For the farmhouse, I drilled holes through the mountains and glued the battery boxes on the back side of the mountains. I took the last bulb on the strand of lights in the barn and wired it to a craft stick to create an outdoor pole light. That's a thumbtack stuck into the top of the craft stick.
Initially, when I started making these Christmas houses, I had every intention of selling them in my booth. But then I staged them on my bookshelf and I saw them lit up at night and they were so cute. And I thought, oh my goodness, I think I'm gonna have to keep these. So I hope you'll make some for yourself because not only are they super cute, but they were super fun to make. And now I am really in the mood for more Christmas crafts. So please let me know in the comments what kind of projects you would like to see me try in future videos. Well, that's all for today. As always, thank you so much for being here. Until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now.